15, we in chapter 15, and so in verse 21 it says, Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And so we find that Jesus now leaves and goes far north. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. And so we find that we are not told that she's just a woman, but we are told she's a Canaanite. And they were the enemies of Israel when Israel entered the promised land. She's a Gentile, and yet we find that this Gentile addresses Jesus by his messianic title. She does not say to him, teacher or rabbi, have mercy on me. She does not address Jesus as a prophet, but she addresses him by his messianic title, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. And then we find the Bible says Jesus did not answer the word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. And this is very interesting, friends, because if you know the Bible and you know Jesus, then this is not something that our Lord does. Because we find here that she cries out, she acknowledges him like many haven't. Because many um, say, who is this man? He's just the son, a carpenter's son. She acknowledges him to be the Messiah. Yet he ignores her. The disciples jump on the bandwagon and they say to him, Lord, tell her to take a dive as if. She's irritating us. She's getting on our nerves. We're sick of her. Um, and we find here, friends, the reason that the Lord does this is, we mustn't forget yesterday's lesson that he taught them. He warned them and said, God doesn't look on the outward appearance. It's not what you put in your mouth, but what comes out of your mouth. And we find that this woman comes, and what comes out of her mouth is that she acknowledges Jesus for who he is. She comes humbly before the Lord. She pleads with the Lord. And she comes before him and she says, you can help my daughter. And they miss that. And so we, we see that all that they are doing is they almost have a Pharisaic attitude. Lord, send this woman away. They don't see her heart. They just see her for who she is. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And so Jesus says, I was sent to come to my own. Yet we find that his own, his own people did not accept him. And so Jesus ignores her first. Then he tells her, he says, you're a Gentile. I'm a Jew. I've come for the Jewish people. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she replied. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Here's the incredible thing for me is that even though Jesus ignores her and says he hasn't come for the Gentiles, she still perseveres. She now falls before the Lord, the, acknowledging who he is, has not helped. Now she bows before him. She says, I know who you are. And she worships the Lord. And then the Lord says that you don't give the children's bread to dogs. Um, that's an incredible statement. See, this woman knows that Jesus is her only hope. And so we find here that Jesus does not at this moment um, give her the answer that she wants to hear. He speaks here. He says it's not right to give the child's bread. But the interesting thing is he calls, he says, it's not right to give it to little dogs. Remember, Gentiles by the Jews were referred to as dogs. The Jews had no time for Gentiles, but the dogs that they spoke about were scavenger dogs. Jesus refers here and he says it's not right to give the children's bread to little dogs. And yet, yes it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And she then turns around. 
even after what Jesus says. She says, you're right, Lord. She says, I'm not a Jew. I'm not of the covenant people. But she says that the, I might not get the choicest pieces of meat as if, she says, but even the crumbs that fall, um, the dog would be able to eat. It's an incredible statement that she says. The dog would even get the scraps. And then the, we find that then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And a daughter was healed at that moment. I want to tell you this morning, friends, and especially to the woman listening. You know, for me, sometimes the most wonderful thing in the Bible is that some of the greatest moments in Scripture, Jesus revealed things to women. The woman at the well, he taught her what true worship is, and the whole town turned to Jesus. We find at different times in the ministry of Jesus, um, Mary realizing his death was coming and she anoints him. She sees something that the others don't see. And here we find that Jesus teaches the disciples that it's not the outward that's important. And he teaches a lesson here on what it means to have faith. You see, friends, to have faith in Jesus is even when things go wrong, even when it seems like the Lord's not there. Yet Jesus physically was there. He ignores her. He says he's come for the Jews. He speaks about that, you know, you don't give the best almost the dog crumbs to the dogs. It almost seems like he's insulting the woman, but she never turns away. She follows him. She persists. And the Lord looks at the end. He wants his disciples to learn a lesson. He turns to this woman and he says, woman, you have great faith. And the Bible says, the Lord says, at that moment the child was healed. Not hours later. As he spoke those words, healing came to a child. And that's where the scripture says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking, and the door will be opened. And so friends, this morning as you go into the day, there might be things that you trust in God for. Maybe sometimes you feel like the Lord has rejected you. I want you to do what this woman did. She never gave up because she knew who the Lord was. If you really know who the Lord is, then you will persevere because at the end, the Lord we serve is slow to anger, bounding in love. He's a God who loves you, who cares for you. All he wants to see from your side is persistent faith. God bless you. This is FTF. Thank you.